Once in a while, Porsche really loves to flex its muscles. What you're looking at here is the brand new Porsche Taycan. It's an all-electric GT. It's a four-door GT coupe sort of a thing. Now you get three flavors to choose from, starting with this, the entry-level Taycan 4S, which goes for about 725,000 ringgit. And one rung up is the Porsche Taycan Turbo, which goes for just under 1 million ringgit before options. And sitting at the top of the model range is the Taycan Turbo S, which is going to set you back at around 1.2 million ringgit, again, before options. Now, if you ask me, the 4S is more than enough for a lot of people. And it also is the variant that offers you the longest range if you go with the highest capacity battery. But we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit. In terms of sizing, the Taycan is actually slightly smaller than the Panamera. So it slots in between the BMW 3 Series and the 5 Series. And you'll get to see the cabin in a bit and I'll show you exactly why it's a little bit more compact. But as an EV, I think Porsche did a very great job in maintaining some of the iconic Porsche design traits here. Albeit with a few modern touches which we'll gloss over in a little bit. But let's start with design from the front. Now, what you're looking at here is probably one of their newer design language to separate their EVs from the rest of their performance cars, their sports cars and SUVs. So what you've got here is this 3D LED lighting system with 4-point LED DRLs as well as LED matrix. This is standard across all the variants. And integrated into this look is this air curtain, which is actually functional and channels air around the wheel arches for better aerodynamics. And speaking of aerodynamic efficiency, this guy has a drag coefficient value of 0.22. It basically cuts through air like hot butter, like hot butter. And uh, part of that is also because of how the car is designed, channeling air around the body, under the car, and uh, there's a lot of drag that's been removed. And to top it all off, the center of gravity of this car is nine millimeters lower than the Porsche 911, the 992 generation. So it's already off to a good start but it only gets better. If you notice that front design looks a little bit neater than what you're accustomed to, especially with the Porsche, but cannot really pinpoint exactly why that is, I'll tell you why. It's because this cutout is so much smaller than what you normally see on a Porsche. That's because it doesn't need a lot of that uh, cooling performance, so the radiators are smaller, but they're still here. It's for the uh, battery pack, it's for the aircon radiators, but it's smaller now, so you get less drag and the car just looks so much better. Except for this, some people cannot swallow this, but I think I'm digging it so much, guys. The lower lip is unpainted and is standard, but you can always spice things up with the carbon fiber gloss finish. That is standard on the Taycan Turbo S. In terms of wheel sizes, the standard rolling stock measures 19 inches in diameter, but it can go up to 21 inches for those of you who want to upgrade. Next to it is actually one of two ports that you find on the car. The one on the left is actually the CCS, the Combined Charging System port, which comprises of two sockets here for fast charging. And the other side only has the Type 2 connector for AC charging. But I'll get into the charging once we, uh, well, go later into the video. Run aside here, you've got the side mirrors, which actually function by channeling air right through the upper section of this haunch and uh, although you can't see it Porsche calls it the greenhouse effect I wonder what that means but anyway I digress this door handle is flush with the body and uh, much like a Tesla or Mercedes-Benz S-Class or a Range Rover Evoque or the Velar yeah you get it it's not a common function but it's nice to see that uh, it's offered here I can't actually demonstrate it because I don't have the key, but once you unlock or come close to it, it's gonna like pop up for you to open and uh, it will close by itself. Nice. Now, like many Porsches, the rear section of this Taycan is actually my favorite view, at least from the exterior side of things. This roof line tapers very nicely into this boot. It's not a hatch style like the Panamera, so it's like a normal boot. Uh, the button you press here to open and it's powered, so no complaints right there. Oh, speaking of boot size, while we're here, this guy is a little under 400 liters at the back and under the bonnet, you've also got about 81 liters of boot space. Further down here, you're going to realize that this entire strip of LED lights up in red, so it's going to give you that very imposing stance when it's out and about. And then right between uh, the badge and the LED taillight is this Porsche script, which they say will be lit in blue LED sometime down the line. But I think that's going to give the car a very nice presence, don't you think? Uh, further down, I'm glad to report that there are no fake exhausts here, so it's true and through <laughs> an electric car that doesn't pretend like it has exhaust ports, except for maybe the turbo badge, but Porsche says the turbo moniker now just is a moniker. It doesn't mean that the car has turbochargers. It's become sort of like a tier. So the turbo is more powerful, turbo S is the flagship, and then everything else below it is, well, typical Porsche stuff. 
stepping inside the cabin, the first thing I realized that the car looks so much more futuristic compared to other models in the stable. So for starters, you get a total of four screens if you so fancy, starting with this massive 16.8 inch widescreen instrument panel. Now, they've gone with a more minimalist look, so it doesn't have that ugly bezels that you typically find in an instrument binnacle. So this is crisp, straight to the point, and if you light up the map function, it's gonna go almost edge to edge. And if you notice, there are no buttons for you to turn on your lights or your suspension management or your traction control. They are all built in to these touch panels uh, at the edges of the panel. So again, very futuristic, and it eliminates all the buttons and the switch gears that you typically find even in a car today. So I really like what I'm seeing here. The steering wheel is still very traditional. You don't get any futuristic design here whatsoever. This is more conventional, rounded ones. You've got your drive mode switch down here, as well as some of the multi-function buttons on the steering wheel. It's powered, of course, via this switch down here. And uh, that's pretty much it for the driver, I guess. Your gear lever is actually here instead of being in the conventional spot in the middle. So that's also a nice touch. Now, for the rest of the displays. Over to the middle here, you've got this 10.9 inch widescreen display. And if you want a secondary one for your front passenger because you love them so much, you can also specify it. And it is also 10.9 inch in size. That is sweet. Down here, you've got a smaller 8.4 inch display. This is standard for all the uh, Taycan models and it's gonna give you all your access to your control, your climate control, your infotainment, your GPS navigation, your music even, as well as uh, the opening and closing of the uh, two uh, storage spaces, the bonnet and the boot. If you press this button, it's gonna let you see your current state of charge uh, for the battery level. So it states here, I've got 88% battery and 248 km of range. You can also pre-cool or heat the battery up uh, as and when you like. Okay, so this floating center console design sort of leaves space for a little bit of a cutout down here, but I don't think this is an actual usable space. Uh, I don't recommend anyone putting anything down here because there's no like compartment to hold your items in place. But uh, I, li I like the floating design console. It's just that maybe they could have done something here or not. I don't know. I mean, Porsche knows what they're doing and I, I just comment. So anyway, what I really like uh, that I want to point out also is the Evans design. Uh, these are non-movable, at least not to you, not physically. These are all electronically controlled and it's got that diffusion type of airflow and it's not very, you don't feel the draft, so to speak. So it's more diffuse, it's more, uh, it hits you softer and it's just a, a, a nice touch that uh, Porsche has done here. Other stuff that I want to point out is the fact that you've got these cubbies in the center and <laughs> a super small bin here in the center tunnel uh, with a 12 volt socket and two USB type C charging ports. There's also a nice uh, plastic piece here for you to keep your phone so uh, it doesn't move about as you charge your phone. Uh, also, I forget to mention, there is also Apple CarPlay and Android Auto built into this thing. And look at it, isn't it nice? Over to the back, as you can see, this is not a very spacious car. Uh, like I said earlier, it's like in between the 3 Series and the 5 Series and this car is smaller than the Panamera, so uh, hence the leg room and the head room. Now, I am 172cm and I think this rear cabin is actually a pretty, pretty decent space for me, despite the roof tapering off very aggressively. Uh, they manage to do so via two ways. Number one, you sit in a slightly scalloped position, which means your bum uh, is recessed a little bit lower, thereby giving you a little bit more space. And they also managed to lower the floor a little bit, so unlike the Tesla Model S, where you sit uh, at the back like this, uh, because underneath is all the battery, you know? So they managed to give a little bit more angle uh, down here, cut a little deeper hole, so you sit a little bit more conventionally and uh, more comfortably. In terms of powertrain, all Taycan models get two electric motors, one up front and one for the rear axle. The one in front gets a one-speed transmission and the one at the back gets an innovative two-speed transmission. Porsche says this two-speed gearbox gives the Taycan better low-speed acceleration and higher top-end speed. And the fact that the electric motors are permanent synchronous units instead of asynchronous ones, provide repeatable performance so you can do launch control after launch control after launch control. This is a salient feature and a unique selling point of the Taycan. 
Now, the Taycan 4S gets 435 PS and 640 Newton meters of torque, but an overboost function pushes it to 530 PS. This is good for a four second sprint. Stepping up to the Taycan Turbo, you get 625 PS and 850 Newton meters of torque, or 680 PS on overboost. This is good for a 0 to 100 sprint time of 3.2 seconds, whereas the top of the line Taycan Turbo S packs a whopping 761 PS and 1050 Newton meters of torque, which is good for the sentry sprint time of 2.8 seconds. This is ridiculous. In terms of battery size, there is the smaller 79.2 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack, which gives you around 400 kilometers of range on a full charge. But what you really want is the larger 93.4 kilowatt hour performance battery plus, which gives you a whopping range of 464 kilometers. The same Performance Battery Plus is also available on the Taycan Turbo and Turbo S, which give 452 km of range for the Taycan Turbo and 416 km for the Taycan Turbo S. All three variants get adaptive air suspension with three chamber air springs, Porsche Active Suspension Management, and Porsche Traction Management. As an electric car, the Taycan is cutting edge stuff. For starters, it's the first production kind of world to use an 800 volt system architecture, which enables faster charging, thinner wiring gauges, and less heat when you charge the car. Speaking of charging, this is where it really gets interesting. But I wanna start with your expectations. So to charge this 93.4 kilowatt hour battery at home, it's gonna take you a little over 24 hours. But if you plug into the 11 kilowatt wall box that will come with the car for early adopters, that's gonna bring charge times down to eight hours for the smaller battery or nine hours for the larger battery. Now, charging, of course, for this wall box is uh, AC. It either works with a single phase or three phase charger, so you can install this at your home. But for those of you who want faster DC charging, this 800 volt system actually enables fast charging of up to 270 kilowatts. Currently, there are no charging systems that fast in Malaysia, but what SimW Auto Performance has done is install three of these chargers, which is the one outside. These are 175 kilowatt super fast DC chargers, one here in Ardamansara, another one in Penang, and also another one in uh, Porsche Center, Sungai Besi. This is gonna reduce your charge times to 36 minutes, guys. 36 minutes from zero to 100, that is a cup of coffee and then some, you get a full charge and you get 400 kilometers of range. That is ridiculous. But for those of you who want to peruse the 50 kilowatt DC chargers uh, that are available in some places in Malaysia, that's going to charge the car up in 93 minutes. So not too bad in my humble opinion. Just to throw some final figures at you, this wall box, uh, if you don't manage to be one of the early adopters, is going to set you back at 7,000 ringgit. So that is not too bad. And uh, just to let you know, the 175 kilowatt DC charger that is available outside, that's gonna cost 400,000 ringgit for them to install. So <laughs> it's ridiculously expensive, but it's ridiculously fast too. But I don't know, maybe when EVs become the norm, it's gonna be cheaper. So that's pretty much it for our very quick first look around the Porsche Taycan. Now, I know uh, I may sound a little bit over enthusiastic, but that's because I truly am legitimately excited about the Porsche Taycan and I cannot wait to take this baby out on the test drive one day. They said they will be registering this car, so stay tuned for that if you want to find out what we think of the Porsche Taycan. But there you have it. What do you guys think of the Taycan? Let us know in the comment section below. And would you spend this amount of money on an electric car? So. Everything in the comment section below, guys. See you guys down there. Be civil and uh, take care. See you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.